we're going to start with the wild leaf. And so I made a little flow chart here. These are the chapter six slides. They're linked um, both from our daily agenda and from the module, at the top of the module. And so the flow chart here is how a while loop works. As we study these three different types of looping structures over the next couple of days, we're going to compare and contrast and see in what ways are they similar and how are they different. And eventually, why would we want to use one over another? Okay. So a while loop starts with evaluating a condition. A condition is a Boolean expression, evaluates to true or false. If it's true, we execute the statements in the body of the while loop. And when the, we're done with executing those statements, we go back and we evaluate the condition again. With if else statements, we started to see more sophisticated flow of executions, meaning we could our, the next line of code that executes is either this or this. If this, then execute this code, else execute the other code. Here our flow of execution is getting even more sophisticated because we're running a, a series of statements and then jumping back up to reevaluate a condition and then executing those statements again. Okay. At some point, the condition evaluates to false. We skip the body and we continue with the next code. <coughs> That's our flow chart. That's our general structure. So let's code an example together of what this looks like. This iterations class is just a place for us to type some very simple static methods that we can run independently. It's not a class like a door, a vending machine, um, anything like that. Uh, so let's just make a public static method, public static void while example. This is our method for an example of a while loop. And we'll capture in our comments here what a while loop is. What does a while loop do? Well, it evaluates a Boolean expression, which we refer to as the condition. If that Boolean expression evaluates to true, if true executes the body of the loop and then re-evaluates the condition. If false, skips the body, and continues. If you're familiar with any of the looping structures that we're going to be studying, um, you're probably most familiar with a while loop. Okay? Um, it is the most common among different programming languages. The while loop in Java is essentially identical to the while loop in Python, so there's a little bit of similarities there. One thing we're going to see over the next couple of days is that every looping structure has the same four elements. How we specify those four elements just varies. Okay. So today and tomorrow, I'm going to always comment where each of these four elements are. So let me show you what I mean by that. Um, we're going to declare a local variable of type int called count. And we're going to initialize it to 1. This is the initialization. It's the one of these four parts of every looping structure. Now we'll actually use the while statement. So here's our new keyword, while, followed by parentheses. And in parentheses, we put the condition. It's a lot like an if statement, okay? Except instead of if, checking the condition, it's while, checking the condition. Um, but similar, similar syntax. So we're going to print numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we're going to say while count is less than or equal to 5. This is the condition. There's no semicolon here at the end of the while statement. Rather, there's a pair of curly brackets which defines the body of the while similar to our if statement. System.out.println 
trunk. This is the body of the while loop. And then finally, count plus plus. This is where we update the loop variable. Count plus plus increments count by one. We could certainly write count plus equals one. Incrementing by one is so common, however, that there's a special operator just for that. Plus plus increments by one. Then outside of the curly brackets that defines the body of the while loop, let's just print a simple message that we are done with the loop. The structure of this while loop is similar to that of the if statement, except it says while instead of if. It has a body where the body is only executed if the condition is true, but there's a major difference, which is with an if statement, if the condition is true, we run the body exactly once and then we move on. With a while statement, we continually execute the code in the body and after, and after each execution, we then reevaluate that condition to see if it's still true. Okay. So syntactically, there's some similarities. Behavior-wise, very, very, very different. Let's actually run this. So I'm going to run the while example. It prints out one, two, three, four, five, done. Excellent. That's our while loop. Cool. Let's do question. Absolutely. Yeah. If this were an if statement, so the question is. Is the main difference with a while versus an if that it continually checks back the statement? That's exactly the main difference. If this were an if statement, we'd check this condition once. If it was true, we'd run this code once. If it was false, we'd skip this whole body altogether. In either case, we then run this line of code here. With this being a while, we check this condition. If it's true, we run the body, and then we go back and check the condition again. If it's still true, we run the body again, and we go back and check the condition again. I love the word while. While count is less than five, do the stuff in the curly brackets. Like from an English phrasing perspective, it's pretty good, especially for a programming language. While count is less than or equal to five, print count, increment count, on we go. Let's write another example that does something um, let's count by twos from 1 to 50. So something a little bit different. Public, static, void, while, example, two. I'm going to actually copy this code to save a little bit of typing time and then we're going to modify it slightly. We're going to change our condition to be while count is not equal to 50. And then we're going to say count plus equals 2. So change the condition, change the update the loop variable part. Everything else is the same. Let's run this too. Ooh. 
it is counting by twos, but it's not going from one to 50. Um, it's counting much, much higher. Okay? This is really easy to have your program do this, where your program appears to never stop running, it might crash with a stack overflow error eventually, um, or an out of memory error eventually. Um, if it never seems to stop running, you can go to your BlueJ project window. There's this little reset arrow here in the lower right corner. If you see this blue bar bouncing back and forth, that means your program's still running. If I hit the reset button, it resets the Java virtual machine. It stops my program from running. I'm back to a clean slate. What I've coded here is something that we do unintentionally from time to time. It's our first pitfall we need to watch out for. This is an example of an infinite loop. We don't want that. An infinite loop is a looping structure where the condition never evaluates to false, and therefore the loop runs forever, runs infinitely. You may remember from our very first unit when we defined an algorithm, one of the properties of an algorithm is that it's terminating. It's not useful if it never finishes. Okay? This isn't useful because it never finishes. How do we fix this? Well, in general, we don't really want to, it's, it's better practice to write our loop conditions not so much in terms of equality and inequality operators, but rather greater than or less than operators instead. It just avoids this pitfall. So a better condition would be while count is less than 50. Because right now we go 1, 3, 5, 7, eventually we get to 47, 49, 51. It's never 50. It's always not equal to 50. That's why it runs forever. But if we said count is less than 50, 47, still good. 49, still good. 51, ooh, 51 isn't less than 50. The loop is stopped. So that would be a better way to write this code. 